with a doctor. Featuring Southwest Florida's leading physicians. Hosted by Dr. Gregory Leach and Jim York. Welcome to Dialogue with a Doctor. I'm Dr. Gregory Leach and this is Jim York, my co-host. We're here this evening to talk with Dr. Kevin Lamb. Uh, Dr. Kevin Lamb is a foot and ankle surgeon practicing in Naples, Florida. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Very well, Craig. Dr. Lamb, could you uh, just give us a little background on yourself and your practice in Naples here? Well, I grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, I trained up at uh, Temple University School of Podiatric Medicine and um, went uh, did a year training over there, and then I finished off at Mount Sinai Medical Center and uh, Jackson Memorial Health System in Miami, Florida. So, um, and then did you come directly from there to here? Yes, I came directly from Miami to uh, Naples, Florida. Yeah, and you've been here for a while. It's about six years. Yeah. In your, um, and in your office, uh, where the locations are, and you have other people in your office also, physicians? Yes, I have uh, Dr. Brian Tim, who also practices with me in our practice. Mm -hmm. And your, your uh, location uh, of your practice is on Goodlett? We have one, uh, our main office on Goodlett Road, 661 Goodlett Road. Our uh, secondary location is across from uh, Lely Resort at uh, Tamiami Trail East. Okay. Do you, um, so you're open during the week primarily? And, you, and you're doing surgery. Where do you do your surgery? Uh, most of our surgeries are done at, at the hospital, Naples Community Hospital. We have a full day dedicated uh, to our uh, office in the OR. You mean you have a commitment, a full day, a commitment from the hospital? A commitment and a committed room to uh, just for an ankle surgery. Mm, that's a lot of surgery. Well, we deal with a wide variety of cases. Uh, we, we deal with both elective and trauma. So oh, that really? keeps us pretty busy. Okay. So if you're doing trauma, do you end up, are you on call then? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. We're on call at the Naples Community Hospital um, as well as North Collier Hospital for um, for um, foot trauma and ankle trauma. It, it, it seems to me that there, there had been, I, I'm a practicing physician here, a lack of foot and ankle surgeons in Naples. I mean, we didn't have any before you came here, really. Um, correct. When I uh, saw the opportunity, uh, when I came over to visit with my family, and uh, that's why I decided to come over here and offer my services to the community. It just, it seems to be to me, uh, and, and to a certain extent, a, a neglected area of the body, you know. Um, is, is that your perception, or is it just in certain areas or of the country? Well, in uh, major metropolitan cities, you'll, you'll have a lot more uh, reconstructive podiatrists or uh, orthopedic financial surgeons uh, available. Uh, but I guess in uh, smaller cities where there's not a big training program for this uh, subspecialty, mm -hmm. um, there, there's definitely uh, is a lack. A lack. And how about the difference between an orthopedic and, and you? Foot, foot, and you uh, well, there's um, general orthopedic surgeons. Right. They'll, they'll handle everything from knee, hips, fractures of any bone. And then they'll have uh, specialists in uh, foot and ankle surgery in orthopedics, the mm -hmm. foot and ankle orthopedic surgeon who do an extra year fellowship after their training. Is that okay? Um, but with us, we specialize from day one going to podiatric medical school. And uh, afterwards, we, we train in the hospital. Uh, anywhere from uh, three to four years, and then we also have a fellowship at the end if we choose to do if we choose to do so. So you're on foot and ankles constantly from the beginning. Pretty much, pretty much. When the hospital has a complex case and uh, have to take a handle of it, uh, we'll usually take it. And and I mean, uh, I guess we're talking about surgery, but people with with that have fractures in their foot, but how about arthritis and, and bone loss, or how, how does that affect uh, w w in your practice what you do? Or? Well, we deal with a lot of uh, sports injuries. We deal with a lot of uh, use and abuse, uh, such as plantar fasciitis. Heel pain is one of the most common things we see. Um, I would say we see about four or five of those cases every day, um, people coming in with heel pain in the morning. Um, other than that, uh, arthritis of the foot, uh, from just wear and tear and uh, arthritis of the, the toe joints and ankle joints. So some of the surgery that you do for trauma, or I should say some of the degenerative things that you end up doing are still major surgeries. It doesn't have to be trauma for it to be a major surgery? Correct. It does not have to be trauma to be a major surgery. The foot is com comprised of 28 bones and multiple joints. So. Um, 
when, whenever I'm in the operating room, our consent form is very long because we name every joint in the foot that we're uh, working on. So, um, it's, so you can be working on more than one, multiple bones at the same time. Correct, multiple bones and multiple foot to, to achieve the um, desired uh, result. So that, does that take a lot of education on, on, on a view of the patient before you do the surgery? Correct. Uh, we, def we definitely uh, educate the patients about the anatomy of the foot and what we're going to do and why we're doing it. Okay. And what about your partner, um, your associate? Is he doing surgery as well? Yes, uh, Dr. Brian Tim is an uh, excellent asset to our practice. He uh, actually has uh, both the experience of, uh, of a podiatric surgeon. He trained at one of our top programs in the country. And then he also trained at a front ankle orthopedic fellowship um, for three months with, uh, with a highly regarded orthopedic surgeon who deals strictly with deformities of uh, pediatric and adults. Hmm. Are you seeing any pediatric patients? I do. Uh, we see a good amount of uh, pediatric patients. From hmm. the most simple uh, heel pain in pediatric patients, uh, inflammation, the growth plate, to, uh, to trauma, to uh, flat foot deformity, uh, club foot deformity and uh, residual club foot deformity. We, we, in, in Naples, we see sometimes limitations in pediatric medicine, and certain physicians see pediatric patients, and, and very few sometimes will, especially in specialties. So you are seeing all pediatrics? Yes, we do take care of most pediatric cases, yes. Oh, good, cool. Um, well, if you show us what you have. Yeah, what are these toys? Hmm. <laughs> well, we'll look at it before we get started. <laughs> well, all these toys on the table show the advances in uh, podiatric and orthopedic foot and ankle surgery. Uh, I would say over the last uh, three years, even in, when I was in training, we didn't have all these um, cool toys and um, plate fixation and screws. And one of the major advances is that uh, the orthopedic companies now have given more attention to foot and ankle surgery, foot and ankle pathologies, and uh, they recognize that there's a market for this. People are becoming more active, and uh, the wear and tear on the foot and ankle is, is tremendous. You're, you're putting up to two times your weight on one foot, uh, sometimes when you're running, up to four times sometimes. So there's definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of force on this foot. And um, the beauty of these fixation nowadays, number one is titanium, is flexible. So we're able to curve the plate around the structure of the foot. As you can see, the foot is not flat, uh, has contours, and the, um, the screws actually lock into the plate itself. So in order for this construct to fail, the whole thing needs to fail. The whole construct needs to fail. So it's more stable fixation, allows us to do more advanced surgeries and um, help more patients. So you're saying this is more um bendable or to, can you explain that in more detail just so patients understand what that means? Well, um, this is titanium versus uh, stainless steel, which I'll show on the table a little bit later on. The uh, titanium, we're able to bend it, but yet it has a higher breaking strength than uh, stainless steel. We're able to bend the plate directly to the shape of the bone of the foot. So it contours right, we laid the plate right on the foot and uh, we're able to contour all the holes and the, um, the plate itself to the structure of the foot. So the plate is directly contacting the foot bone and we're allowed to put screws in any direction and lock the plate, the screws into the plate to get a more stable construct. What, ki what kind of problems, what's the most common thing that you see in, in your practice here in Naples? Or can you tell us that? Just well, besides the, besides the uh, plantar fasciitis, the heel pain that we see, we see a lot of arthritic uh, conditions such as big toe joint arthritis. You, wake, you uh, have the big bump on the, on the top of your foot. You might, some people come in and say, doctor, I have a bunion. Uh, bunion's on the side. There's a dorsal bunion or, or an arthritic joint up here. So that's where this plate so comes just in. Just to handy. orient them, because I think this is taken apart. Um, you're saying that's this joint right here. That the is big correct, toe joint. the big toe joint. Okay. All right, good. So if these are used to fuse the joints together? Correct, this is used to fuse the, the joint together. That's one of the options. I mean, we have uh, joint implants also for the first toe joint. Um, purpose of showing this is to show the contour of the plate and how it contours to the first toe joint. So when a patient comes in for the option of a fusion, such as marathon runners and athletes, 
Um, a fusion is actually one of the best ways to take care of the arthritis in the first toe joint in advanced stages. Um, so this allows us to weight bear the patient a lot quicker. So the old, old uh, mentality of uh, having the patient off their feet for about six to eight weeks after toe fusion is no longer true. We, we get them weight bearing as soon as uh, two weeks even. So even in, in an athlete, you can, they can still function after this? Correct. For yeah. this particular problem? Well, correct. With, uh, with a big toe joint arthritis, you're going to hurt with every step. Um, you try to bend it, it won't bend anyway. So I tell the patients, you're not bending it anyway, but when you do bend it, it causes pain. So let me fuse it for you yeah. in the correct position. You won't have pain. You're already locked. You're not losing any motion. Then, so you're just gaining a pain-free uh, way of ambulating. So Diff you would, go ahead. It's different. It does, uh, different age groups. It, uh, uh, it could be an athlete that's been an athlete for so many years or longer or shorter or or you see this in older patients more, or could be a young person. Just give us kind of the demographics there. Well, we see in a good mix of patients. We see them anywhere from in their 30s up into their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, we see them in the younger population is sort of when they have an acute injury, such as when they play soccer, they kick the ball and they jam the joint. They have a turf toe injury. Um, that's when we see in the younger patients. Usually when you get into your 40s and 50s, that's when we get to see the repetitive uh, strain, people coming in with re constant chronic repetitive in, uh, injuries causing this arthritis. We're going to take a minute and just take a short break and we'll be back after just a minute again to talk to Dr. Kevin Lamb more about advances in foot surgery, especially joint replacement. I had been a, a practicing orthopedic surgeon for a number of years and I thought that I was invincible to the multitude of medical problems I saw around me every day. I uh, was quite shocked when I received a phone call telling me that I had cancer of the prostate. Dr. David Spellberg of Naples Urology Associates is the local specialist in treating prostate cancer with the new CyberKnife radiation treatment. Once I got myself together was to do as much research as I could and what I was looking for was a treatment that would give me the least risk of complications and side effects and that's where the CyberKnife came into the picture. Advanced CyberKnife technology for Precise. It sends just the right dose of radiation to the cancerous areas. Fast. Each treatment is only one hour, non-invasive. This outpatient procedure has almost no side effects. The day after my treatment, I was out playing golf, and I'm looking forward now to continuing to enjoy a long and happy and comfortable life thanks to the care of my team of doctors and to the CyberKnife procedure. Learn more about CyberKnife and Dr. Spielberg. Call today. The survival rate for an early caught breast cancer is about 97%. Thermography saves lives by detecting that breast cancer early. Radiology Regional Center, earning your trust yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Radiology Regional Center is happy to bring you digital mammography. The advantages include shorter exam time, fewer retakes, and lower dose radiation. Radiology Regional Center, the best just got better. Before you can get to this. Welcome back to Dialogue with the Doctor. I'm Dr. Greg Leach and we're here this evening with Kevin Lamb. He's a practicing uh, foot and ankle surgeon in Naples, Florida and I've known him for quite some time. He's treated many of my patients very well I might say. Um, we're going to talk now a little bit about um, joint replacement because there's some new stuff with joint replacement here. Exactly. Some very exciting uh, things about uh, joint replacement. Um, first of all, um, the ankle. The ankle replacement has been around for about 30 years, but unfortunately uh, has received a lot of bad press in the past because um, there was no exact way of making a cut for the bone in an arthritic joint um, in the old uh, style of ankle replacement. And, uh, and also the joint was not made itself. The joint replacement was not made anatomical. Mm -hmm. Now through modern mapping technology and um, modern um, technology as far as place jigs and cuts where they take where they take away the technologies that they use for the knees and hips now they're they're taking they're taking a lot of the technology that we that we're using that they put in the knees and hips to make it so successful and now they're putting it towards the ankle now so the ankles are becoming more successful so the ankle's been neglected 
unfortunately has been um, as far as implant is concerned yeah, ankle yeah. we've always been doing fusions fusion is always the gold standard it still mm -hmm. is the gold standard mm -hmm. for an ankle fusion but the problem we face with an ankle fusion um, is that once you fuse a joint such as an, an ankle you put more strain on the rest of the ankle place more stress on the rest of the joints of the foot so great you fix the ankle now the rest of the foot um, so starts instead of walking around. like this you 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 can't bend this at all. You cannot. In, in yeah. ankle fusion, you lock this joint. You lock this joint up. So you're really bending through the joint down here. Mm -hmm. You're bending through the joints of the foot. Mm -hmm. So you're getting more breakdown of the joints of the foot, mm -hmm. necessitating later surgery for for other things that okay. uh, starts to break down. So when you say that the implants before were not anatomical, can you tell our viewers what you mean by that? Well, yes, definitely. The um, What happened um, back, back then in the research of the uh, total ankle replacement, they, they treated the, the ankle joint itself almost like a knee and hip joint, unfortunately, more like, a, more like the, uh, the knee joint, where they expect only this motion up and down. But in reality, the ankle itself has many different motions here when you walk. It rotates, it goes up and down, but it rotates also. So that's one thing. With this ankle implant, as you can see, Greg, this is wider in the front and also now on the back. Let's, let's turn it this way so you can show everybody else what you mean. So you can see the, the contour here. This is wider in the front and narrow in the back. Mm -hmm. And as well as the side right here. This, this is all anatomical. This is, this is what your true talus will look like. This foot bone itself will look like. So we're actually repeating your bone and your degenerative cartilage with something that is the same contour and shape of what you already have naturally. Mm -hmm. What's the recovery on this? Well, this will, requir will require to be off your feet for eight weeks in a cast, okay. and then we start physical therapy. Mm -hmm. And uh, in what range of motion will you have after this? Well, with this ankle fusion, remember is zero. Right, with exactly. this, we're expecting about ten degrees up, and about five to ten degrees down. But the ten degrees up is really what's needed to clear the ground and walk properly. Mm -hmm. So just enough to make it functional. Just enough to make it functional. Yes. And before we started the show, you were talking about this this other half of the joint replacement up here and some advances that were made with respect to that. Oh, correct. There's uh, many different uh, advances to this little stem uh, from, from the old model. The old way of putting an ankle implant is we make an incision straight down the leg, a huge incision, and then also we cut a window in the bone. We use a saw, cut a window, open it up, and the stem was, is one piece. It used to be one piece, so we need to make that window to, to put it into the ankle bone, and then sometimes we put plate on it, sometimes we just we just put that bone right back on it. Uh -huh. Now that poses a problem. Now that poses the problem of healing this bone, number one. And number two, you're causing more trauma to this area. So if this bone does not heal back properly, then this whole ankle implant fails. So the way this stem is made nowadays is that you see these little, um, little pieces right here, Greg. That's mm -hmm. actually built. That's actually built inside the patient's ankle with uh, use of... Uh, a they almost look like wafers that are on top of each other. Correct. It, it is, uh, the, it is uh, like a piece of wafer that we stack on top of each other. We screw mm -hmm. it in mm -hmm. one by one until we reach the desired stem length that we need to stabilize this implant. So we don't have to make that big incision in the front anymore. Everything is, everything is put in through the bottom and we just screw it in and build it from the ground up. Well, that's a very significant improvement, I would think. The, uh, how, how long is the operation? The operation takes about an hour and a half to three hours, depending on the severity of the, of the arthritis in the ankle. Now, mind you, some of these uh, patients have had other surgeries of the ankle already, such as uh, an ankle, previous ankle fracture, so we're going to have to take out some fixation um, that's already in there. So we have to do that first before we put the ankle implant in. And they're in the hospital for how long? Three days. Three days. You, you um, we're talking um, about pain management, and, 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 and people are worried about pain after foot surgery, and it is something that we have to walk on, which makes it more difficult. Can you talk about pain and how you guys manage that? Well, yes, Greg. Um, one of the biggest fears that uh, patients have about foot and ankle surgery is pain. They heard, oh, so-and-so, my neighbor had surgery and said it was the most painful thing she's ever been through. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest fear, and you know, that, that fear it's not only in the general public, but even the medical community. I had a couple of my general surgeon buddies, their, uh, their wife was contemplating uh, foot surgery, and then the um, same question was asked. And I told them, no, it's really not that painful. Even though I see them in the OR every week, we talk every week, they still have the misconception because everybody else in the community thinks that. 
uh, the way the way we control pain nowadays is so much better than than prior. Uh, number one, having this dedicated Friday to foot and ankle surgery at Naples Community Hospital has been a great help to us. That means we get our dedicated anesthesiologists who are specialists in, in blocking nerves of the lower extremity. They can find a nerve behind your knee that will knock out all the pain sensation to the bottom of your foot for 24 to 48 hours. Wow. And a lot of the surgery can be done without general anesthesia now because of that. These specialist anes anesthesiologists, they are assigned to us every Friday. Um, that's one way. Another way is uh, with, in addition to doing that block, we also give post-operative uh, light corticosteroid injection into the operative site, and we also give uh, anti-inflammatories and, uh, and, pain, and pain pills to help them. But most of the time, our patients don't even require uh, the narcotics that we give them. Really? Yes. Why? Uh, just because of the preoperative pain management. Uh, when I was in residency, that's when a major um, paper was published about using uh, preoperative anesthesia or preoperative uh, local anesthesia for for pain management f to decrease the pain reaction afterwards. So the basis behind that is the anesthesia group who did the study said that if you knock out the pain response even before it starts, rather than waiting to the end to give the patient a block, you stop the pain response. So the patient is much happier and you don't get that spike in pain after surgery. Mm -hmm. So it's pre prevention. Definitely prevention, be prevention before the operation, and it definitely makes a big difference in our patient. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Um, what do you have down there on the floor, uh, Dr. Lamb? Well, what we have on the floor is uh, a mix of old technology with new technology. University of Miami colors. That's what <laughs> we did some of our surgery over there. And um, basically, this, this, this is a cage. Um, this has been in Russia since the 1950s by a guy named uh, Dr. Elizarov. Uh, he's, uh, he's world famous for limb lengthening. Uh, he used to lengthen dwarf legs with the uh, use of these rods. You can see you could twist and turn these nuts and bolts to elongate the space between the two rings. So what we don't do this here in Naples, but what we do, what my um, associate has done in the Limb Lengthening Institute in Maryland and other lim limb lengthening institutes around the world is that for a dwarfism or, uh, or after a uh, severe trauma case, one leg may be shorter than the other. So we bring on this apparatus, they make a cut in the bone, and they actually grow the bone at one millimeter a day. Really? Yes. We do that in the foot also. We have the ability to do that in the foot. We've done uh, a bunch of that in the foot. The ankle is a little bit more uh, specialized. That uh, is usually done at the educational centers. So how, how is it? I mean, a millimeter a day seems pretty fast to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do, you, how do they do that? Well, a couple of different ways. Uh, number one, when we make the cut, we, we do not make a big dissection. There's a structure around the bone called periosteum. That, that, uh, that covers around uh, almost like an envelope or shrink wrap around the, around the bone. That acts as the tunnel. When, you, when we go in, we make a cut in the bone. We make, a, we make drill holes, and we pretty much... Um, we use a little saw blade and we go in and cut it, but we don't interrupt the envelope. The envelope acts as a column. So when we twist it at one millimeter a day, it allows the bone to grow in that column. Hmm. And uh, that, that has been uh, working great in uh, different countries and uh, in uh, special, specialty centers. So the, 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 co the column or the, the covering of the bone kind of helps support and stays intact. Correct. And then you just lengthening the bone inside that cover? Correct. We just lengthen it inside the cover. That's, I, I didn't know you could grow bone that quickly. Oh yes we can. We have uh, one very common thing that we <coughs> see in the foot in regards to this. Um, we'll notice uh, patients with a uh, fourth toe that is a little too short. Uh, we will notice that. Here. Okay. I'm going to that to you. Mm. All this hardware. We have a fourth toe that's too short. Well, we put a device on the outside of the fourth toe here, and we make a cut. Also, the same principle, and we're able to lengthen the bone. Either A, they were born with this, or B, secondary to a fall or break in the bone where we have to grow the bone. And we can do that at any age. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Well, we put a fixator, we put two rods here. 
mm-hmm. in the bone. We make that cut again. We keep the envelope. Op- we keep the envelope intact. So it can. So when we grow it, the bone will grow inside that envelope. So that way we don't need a bone graft. We're not having to deal with um, a lot of open surgery and patients using their own bone. And patients do really well with that, and they're able to walk. So day you, you use the term fixator. The erector set device there Correct. is 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 a fixator or an external fixator. Correct. That causes so external fixator. Instead yes. of so instead of having a cast, what you're saying is you use that to hold it steady. Yes, we use that. We use that to hold it steady and also to guide to guide the bone to grow. If there's a deformity, we can correct it with the fixator by dialing the um, dialing the rods at different at different uh, speeds. Mm-hmm. And how many people have this procedure done? I mean, or is this a common practice uh, I mean, for both? For both? Well, in our uh, practice in Naples, we do mm-hmm. more, more of the uh, foot length, the metatarsal lengthening. Uh-huh. The, uh, the leg lengthening is more reserved for educational institutions. But uh, I would say we average about different five, five and ten a year that, mm-hmm. we, that we do mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on the mm-hmm. metatarsal. In the uh, ankle? Ankle implant? Uh-huh. Well, the ankle implant, uh, we average about, I would say, about 10 patients a year mm-hmm. that we, we, we co-treat with our center in uh, Miami and West Palm Beach. Mm-hmm. Is, is there a lot of education about this in the, out in the medical and, you know, general, general public hear about it? Because it's the first time I've heard about it. Uh, well, Jim, it's all about hips and knees. <laughs> correct. Well, that, that, that market, the hips uh-huh. and knees, the bigger market, uh, there's, there's a wider patient population for that. Uh-huh. The ankle is very selective. And uh, education is out there on the internet. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, our first few patients that underwent these surgery are actually, were actually engineers. They researched this online and oh. they said, this makes sense. So they're ecstatic. Uh, one guy actually had both sides done. And uh, being engineers, they they were very impressed how about the accuracy of this implant. Hmm. Can you talk um, about plantar fasciitis for just a minute? I know it's not a surgical. Well, it could be a surgical it condition. I don't know, but um, it's very common in my practice, and I think common to patients. Can you educate us about that a little bit? What is it, and how does it? Why does it happen? One minute. Well, plantar fasciitis is the inflammation of the tissue on the bottom, bottom of the foot. Imagine a rubber band going from here to the toes. It can happen either two ways. It could be either uh, an acute trauma, such as you step down in the morning wrong and you, and you stretch this out while the foot is still cold, cool. Because when you sleep, your foot bends like this. It relaxes, so you can strain it. And so you get this inflammation here. So the common, most common treatment that we do and that family practitioners do, and urgent care centers do, is you give a little cortisone shot. That resolves most of it. But a lot of times, the patient has to stretch at home. We're gonna, ha- we're gonna have to slow it down here. We'll have to talk about more plantar fasciitis next time you come. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate Dr. Lamb coming. We learned a lot about advances in foot surgery. Um, I think he helps a lot of people in Naples. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Thank you.